Hey everyone, it's Mecca here, and today we're doing a video about how to build a build. <laughs> how to build a Hades build, specifically. Because this game has a lot of RNG, but the game gives you so many tools to manipulate that RNG that if you know how to do it, it can almost guarantee that you get the things you're looking for. And in this case, for today, we're going to be looking for a specific duo boon from Dionysus, in the Curse of Nausea. For this one, you need one of these four Dionysus boons on the right side of your screen here and one of these three Ares boons, and we'll get into specifically which ones we're taking as we're going along. So that's going to be the goal of the run. No matter what level of run you're doing, whether it's just a casual playthrough, you're trying to get your first clear, or you're trying to beat a higher heat level than you've been able to normally, like maybe 8, 16, or 32 heats, or maybe you know, you're trying to beat Extreme Measures 4, I don't know, something like that, it's always useful to know how to manipulate your build. And Ares and Dynas specifically have great examples of how to do that and how not to do that. So we'll get into that today. So the build we're doing is you're using the Aspect of Chaos. Just... Normally with the, Z with the Zac shield, you can just Me. bull rush around all you want and throw your shields. There's no real combos here, you just do a bit more damage than with most shields. Uh, but if we take the Chaos shield, chaos. Uh, after we bull rush like this, you see that Zag starts to have these purple glow things about him, and then when he throws the shields, he shows up, throws up four at a time. If he's not glowing, he just throws one like that. And what, we, what we're going to try to do is put Hangover on the special, so that we poison all the enemies that we hit with our throwing shields. We have to be very careful because while we're throwing shields, we're completely defenseless, so enemies can attack us. Uh, but while we're bull rushing like this, we're invincible, and also while he's holding up the shield, enemies can just not hurt me from that side. They just get blocked, including like all the bosses. It's quite good for getting through a run you're having difficulty with. So that's the goal for today. And of course, if we get the Ares Duo Boon, the hangover damage we do with the shields will increase. That's the whole point. <laughs> that's the whole point. So I made a pact here. This is not a particularly recommended pact or anything for 16 heat. It's, it's probably fine, but there's easier ones to do. I'm doing it specifically like this with no tight deadline because that means I don't have to pause the game with the menu while I'm playing. And this is my first time making a commentated Hades run, so I figured that would be nice to look at. Uh, but I did want to make things a little bit more difficult than the default settings. So we have Extreme Measures 3. I would have done 4, but I didn't want to do spoilers and didn't want to make the video too long, so we're just doing Extreme Measures 3, uh, which means only the first three bosses will be changed. Uh, but Benefits Package will make the armored enemies quite strong, or, you know, a little bit stronger than normal. Middle Management will make the mid-bosses mid stronger, and Forced Overtime will make every enemy a bit faster. So most encounters will not be trivial, but they'll be... Uh, easier than for like, I don't know, any kind of 32 heat pact. Uh, I could have done Underworld Customs on, but in order to show how to make a build, I thought it would be good to not be forced to sell boons if I don't have to. But right. you can definitely make this build work for, I would say up to 32 heat is definitely doable. You can definitely do higher too, depends on how skilled you are at the game. I'm not the best Hades player ever, but you know, I think I have a fair knowledge of the game to be able to make a video like this. Anyway, uh, we got Dionysus in room 1 uh, because we forced him with the Keepsake, the Overflowing Cup, which forces the first boon you see in a um, biome to be of that god. So we got that. Uh, the first chamber will usually be that matching god, but sometimes you get a Daedalus Hammer. I believe that chance is 1 in 4. Uh, but if that happens, then you'll see the god sometime soon, like within 3 or 4 chambers usually, I want to say. Uh, now, Dionysus here has 4 possibilities he can offer us right away, and he will offer 3 of them. Uh, it could be the attack, the special, the cast, or the dash. In this case, we got the latter three. If we didn't get the special here, we'd have to spend a roll, and that would be bad. Not just because we have to spend one of our four re-rolls, but also because we would also be able to be offered other things that Dynasty can give you, like premium vintage, um, positive outlook, stuff like that. We don't want those, but fortunately we got a rare Drunken Flourish. Generally, if you're looking for a specific boon, don't worry about the rarity too much, just take it when it's offered. Even if it's common, you can make a build that's functional around it for most heat levels, unless you're going really high. Uh, but this should be enough for whatever you're trying to do. Um, common is definitely enough. So, anything else to say about this? I don't think so. It will be good to go, we'll just demonstrate the power of the shield a little bit. So, in general, just bull rushing towards where the enemies are, hitting them in the face and then throwing the... Uh, the shields out, and that shotguns like forces into them and kills them. But you can take a safer approach, where you just kind of sideline, drive by the shields as they're like aiming at the wrong thing. I can dash around them and then throw the shields. You can be as safe or as risky as you want. I'm impatient, so I'm not gonna do that uh, all the time. Uh, but yeah, here we'll take the hammer. 
Airbus gates, in case you haven't seen them, they're very risky. You're not guaranteed to get the reward. Basically, if you get hit once inside them, you're not getting your reward. And the hammer's nice. For this weapon aspect specifically, the hammer doesn't matter a whole lot. Uh, it's more important to just not pick the wrong ones rather than, you know, that it's important to pick the right ones. But there are definitely weapons and aspects where the hammer makes a big difference, so I would usually prioritize the hammers. There's actually a lot to say about uh, hammers as a whole that I don't think really fit this video, but for the purpose of this video, it doesn't really matter which hammer we get. Uh, empowering flights is potentially like it adds damage to what we do, probably, if we want it to. Um, because after we hit enemies with our shield special, our next two attacks do 8% more damage, which is almost like a double damage output. It's not massive because we're not using our attack that much, but the bull rush uh, does technically do damage, so it would add a little bit of damage there. Ferocious Guard, if we block an enemy, we do more damage, 20% extra, and our move speed increases. I've never found this one super impactful, but again, it technically does something. And this one makes our bull rush do four times damage to armors, but it's notable again that um, if it says attacks or stuff like that, it does not increase our damage from like Doom or um, Hangover or anything. It's just the base, uh, like just the attack we're doing and not the Hangover damage. So I'll just take Ferocious Guard. It doesn't really matter. I'm sure this is not the optimal choice. Uh, we got Artemis here. That is fine. Uh, there are a couple of interesting considerations here for Artemis. We'll get into that when we actually have the option to choose. Like now I have a guy with a club after me. Oh, hello there. Teleporting thing is one of the things that Benefits Package does. You can see that even if I'm not attacking the enemy, they're taking damage from Hangover. So you can be running away from them for a while. They won't do a whole lot. Okay, so you have three options here. Well, four if you can't reroll. So we have the options of True Shot, Hunter's Dash, and Pressure Points. Now, there's a couple of things that we have to keep in mind when we're doing this. Uh, we're trying to maximize our odds of getting Curse of Nausea. So let me just pull that up again. Curse of Nausea. Because this is quite important. Uh, there are only three Ares boons that work as prerequisites. Curse of Agony, Curse of Pain, Curse of Vengeance. And those are the attack, the special, and the revenge boon respectively. So the easiest way that we can do it right now is with the attack. Because we already filled the special with Dionysus' special. Um, Drunken Flourish, the, the purple thing right here. And that means that the most likely thing for us to get from Ares is the attack that enables Curse of Nausea. We can get Curse of Vengeance, probably, but it's not guaranteed. And it's better that we leave the attack slot open. So if Artemis here offered the attack, I would never take it. We could take the cast, and that would fill a slot. And what I mean by filling a slot is, you see on the left, there's basically five primary slots for boons. One of them filled by Drunken Flourish. Uh, the other one are the attack, the cast, the dash, and the call near the bottom. Every god has a tier one or primary uh, boon, and those are those five primary boons. And by they have an extra priority, so they're more likely to be offered than other boons. And because every god has them, we can increase our odds of getting higher tier boons, such as the duo boons we're looking for, by filling those slots up. But it shouldn't be your only consideration, because there's more to look into. For example, if we look at the duo boons again, and we go to Artemis real quick, you can see that splitting headache, if we take true shots, becomes an option. And that means that anytime we pick up a Dionysus boon, there's a chance that he'll offer us the duo boon between him and Artemis. Similarly, if you pick up Artemis boon. But what this can do is get in the way of us getting Curse of Nausea. Uh, effectively, if you go from being able to be offered one duo boon to two duo boons, you kind of cut your chances of getting it in half. So, in a way, taking True Shot both increases and decreases our chance of getting the Duo Boon. Of course, you shouldn't make every decision in Hades based on, you know, how more how likely am I to get the Boon I really want. And you should also look at, like, how more, how helpful is the Boon uh, by itself. And there's there's even more to it as well, but I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, Hunter's Dash is another one that I think opens up. It actually doesn't open up Splitting Headache, I think. Yeah, so Deadly Strike, Deadly Flourish, True Shot, Artemis 8. Uh, Hunter's Dash is not included. Hunter's Dash is Artemis' Dash Boon. And we could take it, but we don't dash strike much, so it would basically just be empty. Like, dash strike is when you dash and then you attack, or you hold the button simultaneously. I don't do that a whole lot, I'm just bull rushing and throwing shields, so I would much rather have an actual helpful dash. But also, doing this would fill the slot, so maybe I want to do that. Pressure points, I think, is the best boon in terms of how much it helps us just do damage, because it just adds a chance of critical with any attack that we do. 
which I think is the most beneficial. I would not always recommend taking uh, a boon that helps you make your build complete. Sometimes you just want to take a boon that helps you. In this case, 2% critical. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's every time we do damage. So if we inflict four enemies with hangover, um, each of them has a 2% chance to get crit by any of the hangover ticks. And remember that hangover happens quite frequently. So it's going to add damage over time. It's it's a good DPS boon, basically. Uh, here we have to choose between health and a palm. I'm going to take a palm just to do to make the hangover do more damage. Early on, it's always nice to take palms of power. Uh, especially the first hangover does... Um, I think you get two extra damage out of it instead of one if you add a palm of power to it. I'll be able to show it when the boom screen comes up. Again, if, especially if you have forced overtime on a higher setting here. It's really recommended to take a safer approach than what I'm doing, but I'll probably be able to show that better in the Legion. Yeah, there you go. See, the hangover damage goes from six to eight. And in case you don't know hangover in detail, it's set as on, it says there on the right. Uh, for four seconds, the victim keeps taking damage. The effect it can stack up to five times. So we can hang over an enemy multiple times and get pretty high damage out of it. Hangover is not exactly considered the best thing ever, uh, but it's pretty good. These are all not useful. Take a key here for an extra roll. I hope I'll be able to show some uh, some rolls here. Oh, they are really fast. Hold on. I just totally missing that. Bones are annoying, but I feel like the Shield of Chaos is better at dealing with it than most aspects because you throw your shields all around the room, so the clones disappear kind of quickly. So we don't have to focus on the clones and take them out. We still keep aiming hangover at the guy. You can see it's kind of okay that we're not like hitting all our attacks against the, the original, the OG Blau. Because he's hangover, so he's just taking damage over time. He's doing some D.O.T. There you go. Alright, key gives an extra roll. And then we get Aphrodite here. That's interesting. That means we'll probably get to talk about the god pool in this video. Exciting. Okay, Sneak is annoying because he wipes out... I was a little late, but it's fine. He wipes out the hangover every time he teleports. If you've never seen this guy play the game more, you'll, you'll find out why he's here now. Okay, there we go. Now we have Aphrodite. We just open up her boom menu. Right, so... This is a slightly tricky situation. I think I know what I'm doing, but let me go through my thought process here, right? So, first of all, the attack is just good. It's just double, almost double damage with our base attack. It's not exactly how it works, but plus 97% damage is pretty good. If I just hit enemies with this, I do more damage. That's great. Also important to mention now is I have privilege status on, uh, which says I do bonus damage against foes affected by at least two status curse effects, plus 20% per rank. So uh, right now it says plus 40%. This means that if I hit an enemy while they have two status effects on them, I do 40% more damage, which is a significant amount. Um, the alternative on the mirror is family favorites, which is usually better, but for this one I thought it'd be fun to add in the complexity of privilege status. So I want some kind of status effect on my attack for sure, because what I'm usually doing is bull rushing through an enemy or bull rushing by some enemies or hitting an enemy with a dash strike or something, and then throwing the shield out to do hangover damage. And the hangover damage will be increased by privilege status if I inflict the status in me, in me well. The problem is I don't want to put Aphrodite on my attack because it's rather where I'd have Ares since that's the easiest way to get the duo boon. Um, but it's such a good boon to take. Passion Dash is not as good of a boon. It still fills a slot, which means it's more likely to help us get uh, a duo boon in the future. But it's also Passion Dash. It's pretty bad. Uh, the, the AoE from uh, the... The Passion Dash is not very big. It's not like Splash Dash or uh, Tidal Dash from Poseidon. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It doesn't have any knockback. Uh, it, but it does add a status to the enemy. So it does let us activate Privilege Status right now still with our dash, which is pretty good. Uh, Life Affirmation, it's not a terrible boon, but I wouldn't take it here because I think you'd rather... I think I'm going to take Passion Dash in the end is basically what I'm thinking, which I think... If you're not super hardcore just going for this duo boon, if you're just trying to get a good build with duo, with uh, Hangover, I think you take Heartbreak Strike. <laughs> I think getting Privilege Status going right now, having a good attack boon is better. And then you can still take Ares later and get Curse of Vengeance for the duo boon, maybe. Uh, but we're going to try to get the duo boon no matter what. So I'm going to sub-optimize the choice here and take Passion Dash uh, just to be able to demonstrate some things. 
Hey, post-production mecha here. I noticed something as I was playing that I didn't mention here that I should have. Heartbreak Strike and Passion Dash both open up the dual boon between Aphrodite and Dionysus. So just like with Artemis earlier, there's an argument for not taking it if you're just focused on getting the Dionysus Ares dual boon. But at the same time, the dual boon they do give can be pretty good. So you might want to take one of these two anyway. I will notice this and bring it up later, but I just thought I would mention it now. Uh, also, Fiddle of Dashlot has another benefit that I'll probably be able to explain better later on. Alright, let's take another palm here. I have enough money to buy an item in the shop, uh, a boon in the shop. I have 208. I only need 150, so gold right now, not a priority. If I had less, I would maybe take the money. Uh, but palms, again, early on are very good. Uh, one reason why palms are very good early on is because I don't have that many boons. And palms offer you a chance to power up one of your boons, but it doesn't like give you a choice on which three are offered. It's just random. So the more boons you have, the less likely palm is going to be to hit the palm that you or hit the boon that you do want to boost. Okay, I think I was able to show. Yeah, there you go. So now it is. Oh, there you go. See, uh, that skeleton thing was uh, affected by two status cursed. Aphrodite is weak and uh, Dionysus is hangover, so he took more damage. But this guy died so quickly, it doesn't really matter that much. It's easier to see against bosses. Uh, just keep palming the main thing. You can see our level 2 got us from 6 to 8 hangover, whereas this one from level 2 to level 3 brings us 9 hangover. Less drastic increase. Uh, treasure throw is generally not worth doing, I think. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and skip them. You could argue with money, more money is nice, but I know people have things to do. <laughs> Alright, so we'll go through here a little bit. Yeah, you can see the the guy with the club. He's taking extra damage because of the privilege status. Which makes me kill him a lot more quicker than that lout from a couple rooms ago. I'll just take right, some money here. Uh, here's a trial room. These are, like, if you're just trying to fill uh, out your build and get the boon, no matter what you do, it wouldn't be terrible to take them here. Because, you know, you get more boons out of it. But it's worth noting that they cannot give you dual boons. No dual boons whatsoever. They just can't do it. If someone tells you they did, they're either confused or they're misremembering. Uh, or they think of a, like a legendary or something. You cannot get a dual boon from a child chamber. In addition, child chambers have more enemies than usual. Um, the, extra, the god that you don't pick attacks you. So, they, you know, it's, just, it's more hectic. Uh, if you're finding runs challenging to do, sometimes a trial room can kill you. Or take a serious amount of time if you have tight deadline on. So... I usually don't take tight, uh, the trial room. Uh, also, if you have tight dungeon on, you almost always want to take the shop, but we don't. So we could take the trial, uh, but you know, I don't really need anything specific from Dionysus right now. I want the dual boom, but for that I need Ares. And in fact, most of the things Dionysus could offer me are not super helpful here. Uh, I guess this uh, premium vintage would be kind of okay, uh, but I don't really need him that badly. I'd rather go to the shop and have a chance of seeing Ares personally. So we're gonna go for that. See what Karen has to offer. I have so much gold. Okay, Aphrodite don't really care. Um, I don't think I'm gonna buy the health either. I could buy the health. yeah, I could, but screw it. I, I know I don't need it to get out of Tartarus, so I'm just gonna greedily pass him by. That's fine. Okay, no, he got me in the back. You know what? That's fair. I can play that poorly. Get out of here. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of dudes. Okay, he's not a big one hundo. That's pressure points doing some work right there. It doesn't activate all the time, but it has so many chances to activate that it always feels like worth taking pressure points. Alright, take him out, boys. Alright, another chance to palm or some health. Level 3 is, like, good. I could go for more, but at some point I do want to pick up some max health. Uh, we'll take some max health. You could argue palm is better here, but... I don't think this is a make or break moment. I mean, hangover is nice. Adding one damage per tick. You can stack them on these enemies. It's quite nice. I just feel safe with so much health here. Okay, Demeter. Uh, so this is probably the best time I get to talk about the God Pool. Uh, the God Pool, what I mean by that... The game is trying to give you four gods, no more, no less. The way it does that is it checks at any point uh, when it's generating doors or whatever. Um, how many gods have you already seen in this run? Not counting Hermes, not counting Chaos, only Olympian gods. 
uh, that are not Hermes, basically. So we have seen three. We've seen Dionysus, we've seen Aphrodite, we've seen Artemis. But when I say seen, I mean, how many gods have you taken boons from? I should be more specific. Uh, if you see a god like this, like if I see Demeter here and I go this way, it doesn't count Demeter as being in the pool. But I've taken boons from, uh, Dion from three gods, uh, Dionysus, Artemis, and uh, Aphrodite. Uh, and once I take Demeter, I will never be able to see another god again unless I force them using a god's keepsake. Uh, I will only see those four gods. If I force in another god through the keepsake, I will have a five god pool. What that means is that every door that is going to offer me a god, uh, instead of having a one in four chance to offer a god I might want, uh, it's going to offer me a one in five chance. Um, concrete example, let's say I take Demeter here, and then I force Ares to be in the pool later on in Asphodel. Then I'll have five gods in the pool and every door uh, can offer me all five of those gods. And when I only want to see Ares and Dionysus to get the duo boon, that means uh, there is only a... Uh, there's two out of four that can that are what I want if I only have a four-god pool, but two and five if I have a five-god pool. Case in point, I don't want Demeter. Not anymore. If I had less gods right now, I would take Demeter because I want the god pool to fill up as soon as possible. I want to make sure that um, it gets to those four gods and exactly four gods as soon as possible. Uh, and that way... New doors cannot generate other gods, because before you fill your god pool, uh, if you have three or less gods, they can offer you any god, uh, both gods you have and have not seen. So filling up the god pool fast is good, but you don't want to fill it, uh, you, don't, you don't want it to uh, overflow. So yeah, don't take that right here. And if we see a different god in the shop here, we're also not going to take it. Uh, this is chamber 12, so um, unless you do some shenanigans, you will never uh, have an encounter in chamber 12, so that Demeter room was a free boon. But we got lucky, we got Ares here. So now what we want to do is really make sure that we get the attack. And he didn't offer it. That's great, because now I get to talk about more shit. Uh, he's offering a Slicing Shot, Battle Rage, and Urge to Kill. None of those boons activate the ability for us to get a dual boon. None of them activate Curse of Nausea. It has to be a, a boon that gives Doom. So what we really want is uh, the attack uh, or the revenge. We can't get the special anymore. Uh, because Dionysus is on there. I guess you could offer a replacement for the special, but we want to keep Dionysus there because that's our whole build right there. So we don't want that. Uh, now let's say, let's leave out the moment. We're going to roll, but let's say we were not rolling. We have to take one of these. You could take Slicing Shot, but you don't want to. And the reason you don't want to is because, well, one, it doesn't activate Curse of Nausea, but also it opens up more boons that Ares can offer you that we do not want. And let me show the codex to demonstrate what I mean here. So... Um, for example, uh, this is a tier 2 boon, um, a, a boon that has a, re uh, a requirement, a prerequisite, and this is black metal, you also have engulfing vortex with the exact same requirements. These boons are opened up by picking a blade dash boon, or a blade rift, yeah, blade rift boon. Uh, so that's slicing shot, blade dash, Ares is 8, and slicing flare. Basically any boon from Ares that, you know, does a blade rift, which is his cast, his dash, and his um, call. Uh, the attack, the special, and the revenge, they all do doom things. And those open up doom wounds. Those are the ones that we do want eventually. Um, so because we want Curse of Nausea, we want to minimize the amount of boons that Ares can offer us. So we want to minimize the amount of boons he has left to offer us. And by picking something like Slicing Shot, we're adding more. So we don't want that. Uh, similarly, Dionysus has uh, Chippy Shot, which is his cast. Uh, that has a similar thing going on. We'll get into that if we ever are offered that. So we don't want that. We want to take one of Battle Rage and Urge to Kill. Uh, taking one of these will eliminate them from the pool because they can't offer boons that they've already given you. Uh, so it's probably good to keep them around. You can also sell them for money if you want to. That's a good reason to pick Urge to Kill, for example. Neither of these boons are very good, especially not at this point. They can help you a little bit early Tartarus, but other than that, I don't think they're super helpful. What I'm going to do is going to roll because I really want the attack. And we got the attack. Again, it's common. Don't get greedy for like higher rarity. We don't need it. We definitely don't want Ares' aid. And we we don't care about Urge to kill, like I said before. So we take Curse of Agony. And now if you want to make sure that you're hunting for a uh, dual boon in the right way, you can open up the Codex again and look at Curse of Agony. Or not Curse of Agony, what's it called? Curse of Nausea. And you can see that there is one green boon lit up for both of the requirements. And the requirement itself is lit up. It says one of the following in green text. Uh, it also has that here. Uh, I guess I did light up Aphrodite as well for a dual boon. I forgot to mention that last time. Um, I think that would have happened regardless of what I picked. I should have... Okay, so if I wanted to optimize my chances there, what I should have done is pick um, Life Affirmation from Aphrodite. Uh, but now I can get Curse of Longing. Now, Curse of Longing is not actually bad to get. 
uh, on this build. It's just, you know, I would like to get both of these, preferably. But, yeah. I think I, I did explain that poorly. But, um, yeah, okay, we're ready to get the Duel Boon now. I'm not gonna buy health. I don't think I need to. Watch me die here. Hello, Fury Sisters. Oh, finally. Looks like my... Alright, so I'm gonna try to play as safe. Demonstrate how to do that. That's, that was not safe. Block a little bit. Go away. Trying to bull rush even when I'm not really doing do anything with it, just to activate the ability to throw shields. I'm just generally trying to stay away from her while I'm throwing them out, because when I have the shield thrown out, I'm defenseless. But I do want to hit her with my attack every now and then, because it will give her doom. And it will activate privilege status if I'm not uh, doing so through Aphrodite's dash. Is this the fastest way to do it? Is this the best way to do it? I'm not claiming it is. But I think it'll get you through the boss. There you go. I think I took damage once or twice there. Solid, solid. I don't need the gems. I have everything unlocked. Waste of my time. Okay. So now we're into Asphodel, and now we can switch Keepsake if we want to. The Overflowing Cup doesn't really do a whole lot for us anymore, but we do want to bring Ares' Keepsake still. Uh, this will guarantee that we see Ares one time at the very least, whereas if we don't do this, we'd pick, like, say, uh, the Coin Purse. Uh, we'd get a random god, one out of four, that we have unlocked in the god pool, as explained before. Uh, we cannot be offered Zeus or Poseidon or Athena um, or Demeter. Like, none of those can appear anymore because we have filled our god pool. We have four gods. You can double check this uh, here. Well, no, you can't because we don't have family favorites on. Okay. If you have family favorites on, you can check it here. Uh, you can see how big the bonus is that you're getting. Uh, but we can't right now. Uh, we have four gods. We have Ares, Dionysus, Aphrodite, and Artemis. So only those gods can show up from here. Um, so any random god means that we'll have a one in four chance of seeing them. Not counting Hermes for a moment because Hermes can always show up and will always show up at some points. Um, the reason, another reason why Ares' keepsake is helpful here is because when he does show up, uh, his boons have a higher chance of being rare or better. In other, way, in other words, the rarity is higher, and higher rarity means higher chance to get dual boons. The same goes for uh, Yarn of Ariadne, if you can buy it in the well. And it's not here. It's not worth rolling for it, but it's worth checking for it. And another way to get that would be Eurydice, but we'll see if we get her in Asphodel. If I really wanted to like maximize, optimize the chances, I could sell Passion Dash, but in, as I kind of alluded to before, this is both hurting and helping our chances of getting the Duel Boon. It helps because it fills up the dash slot, so if we ever get Ares or Dionysus, they cannot offer the dash, and they are pretty likely to offer the dash since it's a tier 1 boon. But at the same time, it's hurting us because Aphrodite opens up uh, the Duel Boon with Ares and Dionysus, actually, I think. Um, so... Yeah, if we're offered a dual boon and we're not getting that, we have this to thank for it. So I kind of want to sell it, but it's not really a god that I want to replace this slot with, so I'm going to keep it as is, and if we get another dual boon, we can all laugh and point and cry. See you, and honestly, the boons, the dual boons from Aphrodite and Ares and, and Aphrodite and Dionysus, they're not terrible. They're fine. I really like Ares. Is. But we're guaranteed to see one Ares. So I really want Curse of Nausea. The lucky guy. Oops, so slippery over here. Goodbye. Those things can die in the air. I'm thinking we can make that happen. Come here. So, they go up. Haven't you learned your lesson yet? Easy enough. I feel like the first couple encounters are usually uh, easier in every biome. Not sure if that's backed up by fact. Anyway, here's our Force Ares boon. If we had multiple choices, we'd still want to take that because Asphodel's not guaranteed to give you a god again. Uh, but if we didn't take it, the, the keepsake would remain active. You could use it again. 
And he will show up again in another room, probably, but not guaranteed. Because sometimes the game just doesn't give you another god for all of Asphodel. Asphodel's the shortest by him. He only has, like, I want to say 10 combat chambers, or 10 chambers total. Whereas, for example, Parker's is 12. I think the game is 12. So I generally just take the gods when they're offered. With some exceptions. So let's see, what do we get? No dual boons. Worth rolling once at least to see if we get it. We don't really care about these boons anyway. Like if this was like a good boon in there, like I don't know, impending doom, I'd consider maybe taking it, but I'm gonna throw out one roll to see. And there we have it, Curse of Nausea. Your hangover effects deal damage faster. I never actually read out what it does uh, here. When I first saw this boon, I was like, that's not a super big increase, right? It goes from 0.5 seconds to 0.35. I can barely count half a second, but the best way to think of this is it usually it does it twice per second, but now it does it almost three times per second. And a second is not very long, so we'll be doing way more hangover damage with this active. Thanks, you too. Let's see if we can get some other duo boons. We could get Artemis now, but we have to use the call if we want to active. No, we can use Slicing Shot or um, her, her call, her cast to activate... Yeah, or we can get Hunter's Mark. It's pretty good. Yeah, we can take Artemis here. Hunter's Mark would be nice. That way, once we activate uh, a crit with pressure points, the 2% boon we got earlier, then another enemy nearby will get marked. Well, you see what it does when we pick it up. It's very likely to get offered. Generally, we could take a tier 1 boon like a cast. And that would open up the ability to crit enemies for more damage. Hangover. Or rather, it would add higher chances of critting. These are hangover enemies, which would be like it's not a very good build or anything, but it would be funny. It kind of turns into almost the ultimate hangover build right now. Oh, uh, messed it up. Still died though. Okay, what are we getting? Uh, support fire. I'm not a big fan of because it crowds the screen with eye with arrows, so it's kind of hard to lose sight. Uh, the call. Uh, it's, it's funny that the, I've probably picked the four gods with the worst calls, and Artemis might just be the best one out of them. Okay, I'm actually really slandering my boy Dionysus here. His call is not bad. It's one of the best in the game. But when you already have a hangover build, it is not good and you shouldn't take it. I think I explain why later on. And also, many funny arrows go burr. And it opens up some dual boons. Let me just show that real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, what am I looking for? Like, for example, splitting headache. Uh, hangover afflicted foes are more likely to take critical damage. So if we apply hangover five times to a foe, which is the max we can do right now, uh, we'd have like 7% extra crit chance on any hangover enemies, which again doesn't sound like much, but pressure points is only 2%. And this is going to make it like five times more likely or something. That's not like terrible to go for. So that's one reason to take the call. Uh, although we could also take true shot. Uh, also just having a call boon is nice. It, you could argue that not having a call is beneficial for some other reasons that I don't really want to get into right now. But I think having this as a call is funny. And I don't really plan on using the cast a whole lot, so I'm just going to take it. And here, if I had a deadline now, I'd definitely go for the shop, just to make sure I'm there in time. But, you know, more Artemis boons. Still want to get Hunter's Mark. Uh, it's a mini-boss encounter, so the rarity will be a little higher than normal, too. Let me see if I can uh, hit all these witches with Meng. I don't think it will be... Yeah, I messed it up a little bit. But I still hit 3 though. There's a way to cast your Meg companion keep safe that hits all 4 witches, and I'm not very good at it. You can also cheese enemies like this if you don't feel like rushing around, but it obviously takes longer, more boring. Alright, what are we getting today? Okay, Hunter's Mark. This is a helpful boon, it's also more likely to be offered than most other boons. That goes for most boons that give a status effect uh, that gods do not initially afflict. So Aphrodite and Dionysus, for example, their tier one boons, like you know the drunken flourish that we got, they offer they do a status curse when you use them with your tier one. But uh, this is Artemis' status curse, but it's only affected it's only affected through this boon. You also have like Athena's backstab thing, um, and there's a couple others: uh, Poseidon's uh, razor shoals, Zeus's static discharge. Those are tier two status curse boons. And they're more likely to be offered than most other boons. So if you're looking for a dual boon by those gods, you probably want to take those when offered. Also, there's, there's good boons, generally speaking. So if you see them, generally taking them is a good call. Uh, this is a case where, like, yeah, I could throw out a roll to get a dual boon, but this boon is already good. And I already have to do a boon that I really, really want, so... I'm okay with just taking Hunter's Mark here. And also, I guess this also applies privileged status to more enemies. 
Um, we already have four status curses. We already had three, now we have four status curses going. We have Doom from the attack, we have Dynasty Special. We have uh, Artemis' Hunter's, Hunter's Mark now, and with the Passion Dash. Although we're, I'm trying not to dash into enemies a whole lot because it exposes me a little bit. Especially if I go like dash and then throw out shields. That just leaves me wide open. But you can see the damage we're really adding up now. Oh, third call at it. There you go. Goodbye. There's more. Okay, if it's higher heat, I try harder to be safe. But the point is just to demonstrate how to pick boons. We have a sell well here. We can sell some things we no longer need. Um, since we have to do a boon now, you could sell things that you just picked just to open up the prerequisites. But then again, the boons that we have are quite nice. Again, you can sell Passion Dash, but I don't really feel like selling Passion Dash. It opens up some dual boons that would be funny to add. And like I explained before, the Daphrodite boon is both, hurt, both hurting us and helping us in getting dual boons. Um, I have 527, so we're never taking the gold here. <laughs> we don't need more money. We're quite good, thanks. Free Fountain Room. Uh, so at this point, how likely is it that we get to palm the special? That's like, on the investigate, right? So we have... Uh, how many palmable boons do we have? Because not all boons can be boosted by a palm of power. Now we have one, two, three, four, five. Dual boons can be palmed, so five, six, six palms. So like a 50 50 that it'll show up, I think, the, the special. Gods grant me strength. Not really worth rolling for. I mean, we have three remaining, but we can use those for better gods and better boon offerings. So I'll just take the attack for now, uh, throwing boons on people. Cult could be fun as well. That's a relief. Not a big deal. We can take another Ares boon, we can get Impending Doom, which will boost the Doom damage that we do and make it last longer. Um, let me see if I have it here. Spend it all in one place, mate. Curse of Vengeance, we could take. It does more Doom damage than uh, Curse of Agony right now, even though we palms Curse of Agony. So it's not terrible, it's just another way to inflict Doom on enemies so we don't have to rush through them. Uh, we could roll to get the Ares Aphrodite boon, which is quite fun. Yeah, I think that's better than Curse of Vengeance. Um, it will over. It does not like stack the Doom effect or anything. It overrides each other. So let's say an enemy attacks me with Curse of Vengeance, uh, or rather, an enemy attacks me. I activate Curse of Vengeance, and now they were about to take 120 curse Doom damage. Then I attack the enemy with um, Curse of Agony, do 80. Uh, that 80 will override the 120 they're about to take. So it doesn't add a whole lot of damage, and sometimes it even well, Curse of Vengeance is not going to hurt my damage output, but it's not going to add a whole lot. I'm going to throw the roll, see if we can get another Doom boon. And we got it. We got Curse of Longing. Doom effects continuously strike weak foes. Successive hit damage 50%. As far as I understand, the way this works, uh, first off you inflict Doom, or first off you inflict weak, and then you inflict Doom, and the Doom will keep hitting the enemy, and every next hit will do 50% less compared to the last one. So the first one will hit for 100%, you know, it's just a normal uh, 80, and then the next one will hit for 40, and the next one will hit for 20, and then 10, etc. And it just goes down. But the cool thing is it's going to keep on... Uh, applying Doom to the enemy even after the first hit, so the privilege status will remain active longer. That's pretty cool. And also, it's like a 50% plus 25% plus 12.5% or whatever uh, damage boost to our Doom. So it's pretty good. It's pretty nice to have on this build. It's me or them. I'm on full health. I don't really feel like buying more health right now. I'm gonna keep flexing with the health we get. Usually around Elysium, I take some more uh, Centaur hearts, those, those hearts, to get health. Because at that point, points are less good. Alright, so give the attack. Hang over. And watch him go. Should try to get the data for the passion actually going. You can see the boom numbers. Yeah, this is going real fast. I'm just gonna do some silly that silly looking dash in and out of the lava to activate that blue boom. Just for show. We don't need it because our damage output, even with just Ares and Dynasis, is quite good. I'm gonna save my call for when Bernie is uh, about to go down. Get that juicy max damage finisher. So the way I went about that head was quite silly looking. And you know what? Deservedly so. It's worth noting for the call, it's already activated right now. I'm gonna hoard it for Bernie because nothing to fear here. Um, every 
bit of damage adds a little bit to your call meter. Bigger chunks of damage add more meter as well, but the way the formula is laid out, doing a lot of little tiny damage things adds more call meter than doing a lot of damage at once, even if the total damage is the same. So, like, builds that do damage rapidly activate your calls faster. And Hangover is quite good for that, because every tick adds more percentage to your bar. I don't know if it's 1% or it's like 0.5, but it's pretty fast. So we'll get a lot of full calls throughout, runs, uh, throughout runs. Now, if you're really, really desperate to get your dual boon, you could leave on or put on a god keepsake for a legion, but you usually don't want to. Uh, generally, you're better off with something like uh, the Lucky Tooth from Skelly or the a Acorn to make your chance of survival higher if you're having trouble with Legion, which, depending on the heat and your skill level, you might have. Um, I have about a bunch of gold, so what I could do is take put on Charon's Keepsake to dig into the well of Charon and get these items going for a while. But because our damage output can't really be boosted by those, it's not as worth as it is for like uh, a cast build or something. If none of that made sense to you, don't worry about it. It's not important for right now. Um, so instead, I'm going to put on something fun that we don't really care about, like the, the Palm Blossom to just get a random bomb. Boom, bomb. This is not a very good keepsake. I could take the Chaos Egg if I thought there was a Chaos Boom upcoming, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Uh, I could take on... I could really put on anything here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, if I really wanted to force a certain god, I could do it, but I don't think it's good advice to say that, so I'm not going to say it. Yeah, I'll just... Uh, I'll roll with the... No, nah, the, 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 the palm. The palm. Yeah, that works. Okay, so... If you don't have that item, by the way, don't worry about it. Just play the game a bit more. Don't, don't think about it. So we have everything we need for our build. And now we need to get the things that are just fun. <laughs> we can get some more Artemis boons to boost our like, crit damage, maybe. We can get our two boons. Ooh, ooh, Hermes versus Hammer is always interesting. Probably not the best time to talk about it because it's worthy of a video of its own, almost. Um... We don't have any Hermes boons yet. Uh, we don't really care about the hammers, like I said before. So I think in this case, Hermes is correct. Not sure what to hope for exactly. We'll see what we're offered. Uh, since we have a call boon, there's quite a lot of options that we can get. It would all be pretty pretty fun. Where are the enemies at? Look at all the status curses adding up. They're mostly dying to not me attacking. It's quite silly. I'm willing to use up my call like pretty liberally here because this first one was not going to be very long. So I'm never going to be able to build up the full, full call. Well, I'm getting closer than I thought I would. But I would have been at like three meter points. Three ticks. Okay. So we can get second wind, which is only available if you picked up a call boon. So if you're not looking for those, then you generally want to save picking up a call boon until you've got both Hermes boons. Hermes will generally only show up twice in a run. Maybe three times if you see him in the sticks shop. Uh, but usually he'll try to show up twice. If you neglect him, he'll just come back later usually, but you can't infinitely do that. At some point you run out of rooms. <laughs> uh, Hyper Sprint is always good to get. Like, it boosts our, um, our mobility, and then eventually if we get Rush Delivery, we also boost our damage output. So a lot of the time Hyper Sprint is just the best option ever. Attack, we don't really need it. We have um, we have all the attack speed we need. It doesn't really... It makes you like hit faster when you're trying to dash strike or attack normally. It doesn't really make the bull rush significantly faster, I don't think. Um, second wind, I don't really think it's a great boon. Um, we don't need to rely on dodges. We don't need to be super mobile when walking because we're just bull rushing around. I'll just take hyper sprint for now. And I'll just take some more health because I still have a lot of money that I'm not going to spend on a whole lot of things. Although if you're looking to like empty out the stick shop, maybe buy some of the meta currency things. You could try and go for some more money, or um, try to get more Titan Blood or Gemstones or whatever it, what they're called, uh, Diamonds. Those are quite hard to get for quite a while, depending on where you're at if you're in. But I already beat the game, I don't need any of that, so we good here. Shield guy, you can hit those guys from the side or when their shield is up, like when they're about to attack you. It's quite difficult to time though, so usually I just go for the back. I could have used the call way more there. I'm gonna ignore the treasure trove. If you um, if you're still looking for Curse of Nausea at this point, you could go, go for Dionysus here. Sure, you could show up in a shop, but he's not guaranteed to. 
And this will cost you time if you're on type deadline, of course, uh, whereas the shop is very easy to clear. Um, again, reminder, usually if you're on a deadline, you would pause the game like this, but I think the game looks nice. It would not pause, so I didn't put on type deadline for this one. So yeah, I could just talk to you guys without bringing up the pause menu. Just in time. Anatols. Did you miss me, Zagreus? This one is Okay. Uh, if you're doing this kind of build where you're just relying on damage over time, shut up, Gimo. Then it can be quite annoying sometimes to beat Thanatos because if enemies die to like his little spell thing, like right there. Then they don't die to then they don't die to him. Yeah, like that. I was waiting for the hangover to finish them off and it just freaking got melted by Thanatos. I don't think he'll win, but it's gonna be a little more annoying than with most uh straight up damage deals, I find. Because you have to wait for the hangover to happen. Which is also just like a reason why Dionysus and Ares. Not like the best builds, like not the meta is most meta is builds you'll ever see. Because waiting for damage to happen is not as good as just doing damage straight up. But the damage output can still be high enough to do almost anything you want in the game. So if you like those gods or like those booms, I think those gods are just like super sexy and like I'm not gonna blame you for picking them and enjoying them. Not at all. In fact that's that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it. It's a fun build. Where are we at? 19 to 6? We're good. Dionysus. Alright, you see here that the game prioritizes tier 1 boons. I filled all the slots except the cast, so he offers me the cast. It happens quite often. I'm not super privy to exactly how the algorithm decides which boons to offer, but that's just an important consideration. The reason we don't want to take Trippy Shot uh, early on, by the way, if we ever offered it, is the same reason we don't want to have uh, Ares uh, give us like anything with blade rifts because if you look here for example if we have trippy shot we can be offered high tolerance which I guess that's only one boon that he can offer but it usually also opens up some some dual boons that you don't want to get and also it opens up the legendary uh, blackout which can only be given if you have trippy shot or trippy flare so one of the trippy things uh, and then a drunken boon so basically if you're going for something hangover related, you generally don't want anything from Dionysus other than the one hangover thing, because the hangover also overrides itself when it happens, just like I explained earlier with Ares. Um, anyway, we already have what we need, so we could take Trippy Shot, but I'm not gonna, because I'd rather not worry about it. I'm gonna take... I could, I could roll to get a dual wound. I think I'm gonna go for that. Yeah, I, I'm gonna roll for dual wound and try to get the, the Aphrodite one, hopefully. Hey, got anything else? Did not get it. That's okay. Um... All these boons are kind of trash. It's like almost the same uh, loadouts. This one sucks, but I'm gonna take it. Well, blackout could be funny though. Maybe it would have been good to take Trippy Shot just to demonstrate blackout. Uh, there's still some effort Artemis boons that could help the call be stronger. Which, again, it's not optimal because the call is not optimal, but it's funny. Oh, forgot to do this. Come here. I did that way too late. You're supposed to do that like as soon as you see the health bar. Or just go to that where, where he spawns and just do it there right away. You don't have to wait for the health bar. There you go. This is always a good test to see if you uh, if your build is up to stuff. If you can kill that guy before he spawns too many dudes. Uh, again, we can take clean kill for more crit damage, I guess. This is not a good boon, not by any means, but it says epic. It's purple, so we're going to take it. And we already have our build. Uh, oh, Patty versus Hammer. I really want to do a video on this kind of conundrum, especially in like the first few biomes. Uh, here, usually, it's pretty straightforward. If if Patty benefits you, it's pretty obvious because he can give you death defiances. If you're out of death defiances, you always go Patty. If you are low in health, you can take some health from him. If you uh, just want attack damage, you can go there. None of those things apply to our, us right now, so we can skip Patty. But if you're on a deadline, then you need Patty because the timer is paused in those rooms and it's just so quick to go through. If you're not on a timer, then uh, the hammer becomes viable. Uh, one reason to get the hammers out of the way, even if you don't care about what hammers you get. I'm going to go there, by the way. I'm going to skip the NPC. Of course, um, I should mention, if you're like looking to progress your story content, or you just really like Patroclus as a character, you just want to visit him every time you can, do that. By all means, go there. You will not be offered NPC rooms again if you don't go there. So if you see them, go. Just go in. Um, uh, for this run, it's technically optimal to go hammer. Well, technically optimal. If you're just trying to get the boons, if you really want to maximize your chance at seeing some boons, then that is a consideration. 
uh, for going hammer here because it will get the hammer out of the offerings. Because this is the second hammer, you never offer more than two hammers. So getting this one out means you're more likely to see gods, palms, hearts, that kind of stuff. But I think for most people, generally the good advice is to go for the NPC unless there's really no benefit for it. Like if Patroclus, if you're just not relying on attack damage, you are not missing any death defiances, you're in good health, you have the story complete, you don't think Patroclus is sexy enough to go visit, there you go. Then you can go get the hammer, I guess. Generally, I just go NPCs and those, but I think that's, again, it's worthy of a video of itself, which if you're interested in seeing, let me know. I just want to have any duel on you. Let's fix that. I am not optimizing the order of which I'm applying like Doom and Hangover and everything, by the way. I'm just talking to you guys while killing enemies in a slightly optimal way. Slightly. Oh, god, that clones though. Let's attack the clones over here. Uh, charge shot is pretty cool with this. Um, notice that it says it fires a piercing shot, so it goes through enemy shields like Theseus's and those shield guys we killed earlier. It also does, does more damage. It stops us from moving around, so we lose a bit of defensive ability, but it's generally worth it with this thing. Like, it just kind of just becomes a really good bow that also blocks attacks. And I've, if you've watched Halion play Hades, then you've probably heard him describe it as such. There's no way to, a better way to describe it. Uh, but now we don't like flying around like an idiot anymore. And this is especially cool because it goes through enemies, and so we can hit multiple enemies with the Doom effect as well. Uh, another trial room, I explain why those are usually not optimal already, but if you really want boons from one of these gods, sure, go for it. I'm going to take Hermes. Uh, we have Hyper Sprints, we can get Rush Delivery, which can add to our damage, because it's a global damage buff. Also add some other fun things. Uh, let me see if I can demonstrate the charged shot better than this. Only two enemies here, so it's kind of, kind of tricky. But there's so many sources of damage flying around, it can be hard to kind of go for. You can look at the color of the damage numbers. Red is Doom, purple is Dionysus, Hangover, I mean. White is my own damage, and like my base damage. Or unboosted damages that we cast. Okay, maybe I can uh, control it. Come on, line up, line up for me. Ow. There you go, I just threw Doom on two guys, because the, the shot went right through the cart into the view. Yeah, I did not manage that properly at all. That's okay. You guys saw it, right? In the name Hermes. Hades. Okay, rush delivery. Do bonus damage based on any movement speed. Bonus damage for bo bonus speed, <laughs> 50%. So, I have uh, Hyper Sprint on, which makes me 100% faster. So, and it lasts like for half a second, which is enough, generally speaking, to get that 50% bonus boost. And it is, if it's higher rarity, it's even better. These other boons are just not that good, especially not at this point in the game. Like, there's not many rooms left for our side, also to give us a bunch of money. They're actually pretty good. Um, I feel like that's like the biggest combo that Hermes has. Maybe even the only combo, not counting the legendaries. Uh, you know what? I'll take some more health. Let's make sure I don't die embarrassingly here. There's that piercing shot again. Same old flames. You can probably ride out a run just with charged shot alone. But we're doing hangover, so hangover is. Oops, the guys. There is a hammer. I forgot to mention it earlier. We didn't get to see it, so I might as well talk about it now. The hammer, I think it's called Dread Flight. That makes uh, your shield bounce around more before it returns to you. I think it only applies to the normal shield and not like all the extra shields that I'm throwing with uh, the Aspect of Chaos. But I would not recommend taking that hammer, because if the shield takes longer to return to you, then you're unsafe for longer. You're defenseless. I okay, could've used to call. At that point, most of the enemies were dead, so who cares? Uh, let's take another boom, just for fun. We can get uh, the dual boom with Artemis. We still have a roll left to go for it, too. I think I have Ferocious Guard. I think I... No, I picked something much earlier on, I think. No? I don't remember. I really don't remember. Well, either way, if I did, blocking is good. Oh, there's more guys. Go figure. 
Yeah, what I just did, throw the shields while the enemy's like right in my face. Bad idea, do that, do that. Especially with the carts, they have a very predictable pattern. You panic, they can bite you, and then you just die. In the name of Hades. Got another boot. I think uh, the, the palm hit Artemis' A twice <laughs> over the course of Elysium. Um, this boon is bad, this boon is bad, and this boon is not useful. Let's roll for the Artemis uh, Legendary. Or the uh, Artemis Dynasty duo. We didn't get it. We can get this one though. This is just a free plus 30 health. No reason not to take it. We're not going to find Nectar anymore, I don't think, but uh, it's cool. And we got uh, a boost of Passion Dash. Very worth getting. I think it was like 25 before. Not super worth. Uh, free Palm is nice, but I have so much money. We're going to go to the shop. I could do with some uh, some current health, some sandwiches, some gyros. Give me some max health too. Give me that, give me that. Can we get anything from this? We have the Ares. Yeah, there's actually no doable ones we can get anymore from Ares, because we have, um, we can get impending doom though. We have the Ares Dionysus one. That's what we went for in the first place. We have the Ares Aphrodite one. Hello. And the Ares, Artemis one requires Blade Rifts, specifically to cast, which we're not going to take. Uh, Diary of Misfortune. This one is not very good because we don't really hit enemies very rapidly with our Doom attacks. We just hit it like once and then we use other attacks. And even if you are rapidly hitting, that's not super great anyway with Diary of Misfortune, but that's topic for another day. Uh, but then again, this one is not super good either. Blood Frenzy. I'm not planning on dying a whole lot. And if I was still going for something good, then I wouldn't really want Slashing Shot. I really want the Pending Doom from Ares, but given lack of it, I'm just going to take Diamond's Fortune. It cannot be palmed, so that's another reason not to take. But I guess that the same goes for uh, Blood Frenzy. All right, Heroes Fight. Brothers in death. What's up, Theseus? Then yeah, both the Doom. You really want to be safe with Meg, you probably want to wait a little bit before. Uh, attacking them because I think it can make one of them move in a way where they don't get hit by Meg anymore. Can we both at the same time? Why not? It's generally better to just let Asterius die first and then go after Theseus, but you know, it's a bit more exciting to do it this way. Only at 60 feet, we can do really, we can do silly things sometimes. Oh, we have this. Hold on. Hey, dude. You wanna die? That did so much. Oh, this is uh, waking up, hold on. Let me put him to bed real quick. I got... I got... Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go, I gotta say this. Ooh. I killed him with the call. It looked quite silly. That'll do. Veiled in darkness. Say hi to him. Took a fair bit of damage, to be fair, because I'm playing... Uh, Quite aggressively. Dun, 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 dun. I don't really need any of this. I do want to bring on a defensive keepsake because the the final boss is quite hard. Spoilers for final boss, obviously. So we'll roll with what do I have on again? Yeah, I don't have any hard labor on, so I'll just go with the lucky tooth and keep it going. No money. We yeah, have a fair bit of gold. It's probably worth buying something here. Uh, I don't really think Aphrodite can offer me a whole lot that I care about. I guess there's the Aphrodite Dionysus Duo Boom, but I also just get that from there. This is two Duo Booms I might want. Uh, Dio, Artemis, and... No, that's just it. Dio, Artemis. But this can get me... Oh, or Dio, um, Aphrodite. That's why I want this one, I think. Yeah. I have barely not enough. I would need 450 to buy both this and a palm, and I'd rather buy a palm first. But I'd rather have to do a boom before I go into the tunnels, so screw it, I'm gonna buy this first. I can use this. Didn't get it. Strong drink is okay though. Okay, we'll get a uh, we'll get the effort out of boom too, why not? It's funny. Hey, low tolerance. Your hangover effects can stack more times against weak foes. So normally it's five, with plus three it's eight. I don't think it's gonna be very common that I manage to apply eight poison to the same enemy, but the bosses might let us do it. And we don't have 
Let's see. We have a bunch of dual boons already. Hard to keep track. We still don't have the Artemis Dionysus one. So we can still get that from both boss tunnels, which I want to do first anyway, because I feel like they're easier to do. So let's roll. Try this way. If not, we can get a funny Artemis boon. Or see, what's left of Artemis? Like crits. I think mostly garbage ones, honestly. We're out of rolls. It's a little annoying in sticks, I think the, the status curse builds the hangover stuff. Because if enemies take a while to die, they can do annoying things to you. But you can always cheese it a little bit by just using long range attacks. Like especially with charge shot here. Can hit him from long range with that and then throw the shield out. As long as you keep our distance, it's very safe. You can see the spit coming from a mile away. Poison spit. The more cramped the room is, the harder that is. But you also have your shield to block it. Worst comes to worst. I love seeing this room and this guy in here because that means that I cannot get the tiny firm anymore. Uh, I only have one use of the meg left, so. I can't use it here if I want to keep it for the final fight. Bye. I saved my call for no reason. I'm getting here. Oh, there we go. Another duo boon. So I guess now we can call the video four duo boons. Very easy. It is fortunate that I got four, but I think the way we set it up, it was pretty likely we'd get one and maybe even two. And honestly, one was all we wanted. It's not even all we needed because we don't need two bones necessary to be a run. But they sure help if you can get the right build going. It's worth re-emphasizing just how safe the Chaos Shield is when you're using it. Like it's quite common that if you just want to take your time, you just Let's don't get hit. Oh, here. we can use this now. I'll buy that in case we need it. Um, I'll take that too, because we might almost be at the end. Although this is, yeah, now I can't buy palms anymore. Probably. Unless I get a bunch of gold somehow. Which I don't think we will. Yeah, I don't think I should have bought that nail of Talos. Talos? But it's fine. We have what we need. And we got the sack, so we didn't need that use of Meg. I don't think there's anything you can give me now that I care about. Um, sure, I'll take positive outlook. Take less damage when I'm below half health. And considering once you die once, you're always going to come back with low and half health. That's an okay boon to get at this point. I think it can be palmed though, which is why it's like not great to get early on. Yeah, we don't have the money to buy that, so rip. Let's give him a sack. Bite the boss. Final chance to turn away. How long are we at? One hour of a video, damn. I shall give no quarter <laughs> to the death. Let's do it. Hades is another enemy, just like the sneak that can teleport. And if he teleports, then he removes all the status curses, including hangover, doom, etc. So he can scam you out of quite a bit of damage by doing that. On the flip side, you can block the spin by holding up your shield, and I think that's awesome. Man does an entire twirl. Let me take care of that guy. That seems annoying. I'm gonna be able to save my call. On. It'll be fine. Ah, oh, shit. Messed up there. I keep expecting him to spin twice because I've been playing more, uh, you know, boosted versions of that. But it calls full. I'm gonna use it once he's, like, done being invincible. Maybe get these other guys out of here first so they don't get hit by the arrows. I want to reserve this all for that. Okay. That was nice. That was really nice. <laughs> that was nice. I'm gonna give him a passion dash as well. Don't go, don't go. Also, fun thing with uh, with that when he tries to cast, 
his uh, the skulls and you block those well i didn't do it properly if you block them with the shield they just vanish they just don't exist look how much damage hangover he's taking can we get them eight hangover ticks oh shit i missed him i need to get the them though hold up chat okay six eight there you go eight hangover yeah there you go he's done <laughs> Didn't even need the call. Or Meg. Oh, very sweet. So, that's how you can optimize your odds. It doesn't always work out, but this way you have a higher chance of it working out. Let me get a nice ending screen here. Curse of Nausea. Curse of Longing. Low Tolerance. Splitting Headache. Probably roughly in order of importance as well. That's it. Um, thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any other Hades requests. And I'll see you all next time.